CPM, or Control Program Monitor, was a popular operating system in the early days of uh, microcomputers. You can find CPM on quite a number of microcomputers from the late 70s, early 80s, and Commodore felt the Commodore 64 was not going to be an exception. So in today's video, I'm going to show you Commodore's implementation of CPM on the Commodore 64. So let's get right into it. CPM on your C64, you need the uh, CPM cartridge. This is basically just like a special cartridge that goes into the cartridge port of the Commodore 64, and it just contains like a Z80 processor, which is what CPM is designed to work with. These are not exactly common, and it actually only works with very early model 64s, and uh, I don't have a CPM cartridge or a very early model 64, and I'm not just about to go buy one just for the sake of this video, so this cardboard cutout will have to do. Uh, yeah, we just stick in the cartridge port like that, and we are ready to run CPM. So if we uh, look at the directory for the main like CPM system disk, it just says CPM disk in a single program file called CPM. So we're going to go ahead and load that, and it starts at memory address 2063, if you're wondering, in decimal. And let's go ahead and type run. It takes a second to load and it gives us like a little progress bar made out of stars which is kind of cool. You don't typically see progress bars in like software from this era so yeah I find that kind of interesting. But anyway, fast forward a few seconds here and we get a message Commodore 64 44k Super CPM version 2.2 copyright 1979 digital research copyright 1982 Commodore. It's very, this is very much like MS-DOS, so many of the commands are the same, since MS-DOS was kind of a CPM ripoff. So we can do stuff like type DIR to get a directory listing. And there are a number of programs that this comes with. I'm not going to show all of them, because they're just the usual things that CPM comes with, but I am going to show you the config program. There are a number of different options for CPM that we can change in the config program. The first one is the number of disk drives. This is kind of interesting, you can select either one or two disk drives. The only way you can use two disk drives if you have a CPM disk drive connected to your Commodore 64 using the uh, IEEE adapter. So unfortunately, if you have two 1541 drives, one mapped to device 8, one mapped to device 9, you can't use dual drives. If you have a 1541 drive, you're just stuck with a single disk drive mapped to drive A. And the only way you can use dual drives if you have one of those big IEEE PET drives connected with an adapter. It's a bit of a missed opportunity. I wish if it had the option that if you had like two 1541s that like, you know, device 8 would be mapped to drive A, and then device 9 would be mapped to drive B, but whatever, not a huge deal. Most Commodore 64 users back in the day would just had a single 1541 drive, so. But it is interesting that it does support the PET drives if you have that uh, IEEE adapter. I don't think very many Commodore 64 users had a drive setup like that, though. You can also change the type of printer. You can also set whether you want it to use uppercase mode or lowercase mode when you start CPM. You can also change what the different function key shortcuts map to, so you can like press F1 for DIR and whatnot which is kind of cool. Anyway, that's the config program. So what software could you run using the CPM cartridge? Well, there wasn't exactly much. For reasons we'll get into in a second, most of the software was like programming language related stuff, like Microsoft Basic here. I'm not totally sure why you would want to run Basic under a CPM cartridge, we could just run Basic on the Commodore 64. And I, tried, I tried to make the little famous random maze program here, but didn't seem to work, this doesn't seem to be entirely compatible with the pesky character set. Yeah, this version of Basic's probably not even really as good as the one that comes with the Commodore 64, but it's a thing, it exists, yay. So now I want to talk about why there really wasn't much CPM software that worked with the uh, CPM cartridge, and there were two big reasons why it really wasn't more popular. The first big reason is the Commodore disk drive. It could not read CPM formatted disks, it could only read uh, Commodore's GCR format. Even though like, the physical size and shape of floppy disks was standardized between all the different computer systems of the day, the way in which the data was sort of organized on the disk was not standardized and was proprietary to different manufacturers. Commodore's disk drives used this format called GCR, and basically no CPM software was distributed on Commodore formatted disks, and Commodore's disk drive could only read Commodore formatted disks. The second major reason why the CPM cartridge failed is 
most CPM software was business software that was designed for 80 columns, and the Commodore 64 was only a 40 column machine, so that was a pretty big issue. But now I'm actually going to show you something that sort of solves the 80 column issue. If you remember a while back, I did a video on various different programs that allowed you to basically get 80 columns on your Commodore 64 using software. In that video, one of the programs I showed was a CPM program for the CPM cartridge that does give you 80 column CPM. Okay, so here we go. The program is called Soft 80. So we can just run it here and it does take a while to start. And BAM! We have got 80 columns. As you can see, it says 80 column modification version 1. Copyright 1984, Chris Lampton made this, very cool. And uh, yeah, we've got 80 columns now, but the gray on white color scheme is not the greatest. So there's also this other little program here called black.com, and we can run that, and that'll change it to white on black, which makes a lot more sense. Anyway, so uh, yeah, we've got 80 columns now. There are a few drawbacks to this, obviously. That is that it is a bit slower since we are using the Commodore 64's bitmapped graphics mode and the font is not the most readable on a CRT. Cover that more in my uh, 80 columns on a C64 using software uh, video. So go check that out if you find this interesting. And there are a number of things that we can run in 80 columns now, like basic. And even WordStar, if you use the slightly modified version. WordStar is a very popular uh, word processor for CPM. It runs pretty slowly, and everything with the CPM cartridge runs fairly slowly, and the 80 columns conversion definitely slows things down, but it's cool that this is even working at all. And no, if you're wondering, CPM does not change the color of the text to white. Just use whatever color you have the text color set to when you start CPM. So in Commodore Basic, you can change the text color by pressing like Control or Commodore in conjunction with the number key to change the color. Once you're in CPM, you can't change it by doing that. So yeah, for example, I can change the text color to green here, load up CPM, and now the text color is green, and I'm now stuck with it until I power cycle the machine. So if you plan on checking out C64 CPM for yourself, you can use the Vice emulator. I found that when I tried to use Vice 3.6, it would just crash, and so did 3.6.1, which is the latest version. So I had to go back to version 3.5, and CPM didn't crash then, so yeah, just something to keep in mind. To enable the CPM cartridge, you can go into Settings, scroll down the way you see CPM cartridge, and then just click Enable CPM cartridge, and it should work. I think it's safe to say that the uh, implementation of CPM on the Commodore 128 was a lot better than the implementation of CPM on the Commodore 64. The Commodore 128 actually had a Z80 processor integrated onto the motherboard, so it wasn't like a separate cartridge, and the Commodore 128 could also display uh, 80 columns, as well as they also brought out the 1571 disk drive for use with the 128, and the 1571 could read uh, many CPM formats. So. Commodore 128's implementation of CPM was actually quite good. It's a shame that the Commodore 128 came out towards the very end of the CPM era. I think if the Commodore 64 came out with a Z80 built in and like the 1571 disk drive in 1982, it might have extended the life of CPM a bit longer, but that's just speculation. But anyway, that's just about it for today's video. I know it's been like an absolute forever since I've uploaded a video. I just really haven't been that motivated recently. But anyway, hope to start uploading more frequently again now. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching and have a great day.